green. Okay, let me explain the fundamental concept first. The first thing I want to introduce is about the equal interval search method. Now, suppose I have a function, f is a function of x, and that function, as you can see, is plotted on the screen. Now, in this function, I assume it is a unimodal function, which means it has only one local maximum or only one local minimum. So when you plot, let's say, a function it will look like this red curve right there. Now, obviously, when you plot it, you will see that the maximum of that function is approximately happen right there, which we call the optimum location. And our objective is to figure out the maximum location point of that function. In order to do that, the first step we have to do is we have to figure out, let's say, the lower bound and the upper bound of that function. In this case, we say that is point A and point B. In other words, the optimum must be located somewhere between A and B. Now, assuming we know the lower bound value of A and the upper bound value of B, assuming we know that, then what is the next step we can do? The next step we can do is we pick up the midpoint of between A and B. For example, the midpoint of A and B is right here. That is the midpoint of A and B. And then from that midpoint, you go a little bit to the right by the amount epsilon over 2, right here. And you go a little bit on the left, let's say this point right here. So now, up to this moment, we do have four points. They are this lower bound, as you can see from the green color, the upper bound, that's the B value right there the a plus b over 2 plus half of epsilon, that point is here, and a plus b over 2 subtract epsilon over 2, that point is there. Now, if you look at those four green points that I just showed you on the screen, you can see from this point to that point, the function value increase. And then, from this point to the next point, the function value decrease. Whenever you see the function value changing the pattern, like from increasing now become decreasing, or the other way around, decreasing become increasing. Whenever things change the pattern, then that changing the pattern location will give you the so-called the new upper bound, okay? So, in this example, in the beginning, the original lower bound is A, original upper bound is B. After examining the two point, which we call it, uh, let's say this is point A, and let's call this point B, okay? Because Point A actually on is the same thing as this A plus B over 2 plus epsilon. That is point A. All right? And then A plus B over 2 subtract epsilon over 2. That point is B. Because the function value at A, which is that distance from here to there, from here to there, is bigger than the function value at B. Like I said to you before, from this point to point A, it go up, and then from A to point B, it go down. The pattern is changed. So now we conclude that the new interval should be somewhere between A and that point B. Okay? So, and that is exactly uh, on the other hand, suppose when you take the half point of A plus B over 2, suppose that point is right here, suppose. 
and then when you go halfway with the distance epsilon over 2 and then you go to the other direction with the distance epsilon over 2 then you will get two different points which is right here and right there and when you compare the value let me call this is point C for example this is point D and then what the, what you you analyze it you will see to go from this lower bound to this point D the function value go up and then to go from point D to point C the function value go up again but to go from point C to this point right here the function go down because this represent the the pattern change so the new interval will be in that bracket so as you can see depending on the function at a is greater than at b if that is true then the new interval is given by this range otherwise if f a less than f b then the new interval is in this range now from this experience you can see in the beginning the interval will be large like the lower bound upper bound the range right here in the next iteration the interval will be reduced to either this case or the other case and that depending on this test true or false but that is the main idea the interval keep reducing once the interval is reducing for example if you are in this situation the, then what you have here is this become the new lower bound which I call alpha L bar the new upper bound is right here and that happened to be the same thing as the old upper bound so now we are working with the new lower bound and the new upper bound and then you insert two point A and B again and the process keep repeating until the interval is small enough then you can stop and you say the optimum already been found so let's move on to the next slide well in the previous method we could call equal intervals method it, it will be working but it is inefficient and the reason it is inefficient is because we have to compute two interior points for every iteration what I mean two interior points in every iteration is that once you know the lower bound and the upper bound you have to insert two points such as point A and point B and depending on the function at A and B is bigger or smaller than the function at B then we can determine the new interval we always have to figure out the location of the two interior point and that is not efficient at all so for that reason the so-called golden section method which is a much improving version compared to the equal interval method in the golden section method again suppose you want to plot the horizontal axis is X <coughs> and the vertical axis represent the function f of X and you want to find out the maximum of that function which should be around here okay the first thing golden section require just like the equal interval method is that the optimum must be between somewhere between the lower bound and the upper bound so x sub l and x sub u has to be established from the user once you know this lower bound upper bound the idea is we want to insert the interior point x1 we want to ins insert the interior point x2 in such a way that make the golden section method a lot more efficient than the compared to the equal search method okay 
and the detail is given in the next slide. Here you can see again the horizontal axis is x, the vertical axis represents f of x, the optimum let's say is right here, that is the optimum point. Just like before, we assume that we know the lower bound and the upper bound. In other words, we know let's say x L and XU. So the optimum point must be in the interval between X lower bound and X upper bound. Then after that, the next job will be how do we figure out the location of the two interior points, which we call it X1 right there and X2, which is right there. Well, the way to figure out the location of the interior point x1 is this. Let me call this distance from lo x lower bound to the x1. Let's call it the distance is a. And from x1 to up x upper bound, the distance we call b. At this moment, we don't know a and b yet. However, we know one thing for sure. If you take a plus b, a plus b, that should be equal to the coordinate of x upper bound subtract x lower bound. Okay? So the way we define the location x1 is this. We say x1 is equal to x lower bound plus a. So you can see clearly x1 is equal to x lower bound plus a. Or we can say x1 is equal to x upper bound subtract b same thing as this one same thing so that's the way we define the location x1 now more detail we can see how do we select the value of a and b well the value a and b we try to select it so that it will satisfy this ratio a divide by a plus b should be equal to b over a and then that ratio b over a we say it should be equal to this magic number 0 0.618 well you may want to know why we got that number 0 0.618 and you may want to know why if we select that number it will do some good thing for you I will explain to you in a few minutes. Well, assuming for right now the ratio B over A is equal to 0 0.618, then obviously you can see from the equation which say A divide by XU subtract XL, that ratio, is equal to 0 0.618. And therefore, from that relationship, we can solve for A. And that A is given right there. Once you know solve for A, then you can make use of this relationship and you can solve for B because A you already solved. So B will be equal to this. In fact, you can see very clearly after you 